Good morning. Let's go ahead and stand together. It is truly like good and amazing that we get to worship the Lord together. Amen. And so I'm going to take us into a time of prayer. Let's just get into the attitude of worship. Let's lift our hands and bow our heads. Father, we invite you into this place. Lord, would you help us to just lay down everything that would keep us from fixing our eyes on you? Lord, would you help those that do not know you to seek you and to taste and see that you are good right now? Father, would you just allow us to come together as a community to worship you and to give you the glory that you so deserve? Father, help us to lay down all the things that are in our minds that would not glorify you. Jesus, we love you. We bless your holy name. You were worthy of all of the adoration and all of the praise that we could ever give to you, Lord. You are so good. You are so wonderful. There is nobody like you. There is no one greater than you, God. We love you and we bless your holy name. And in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 You know, if you would, just put your hands together like this with me. God, I'm on my knees again. God, I'm begging, please again. I need you. Oh, I need you. Walk down these desert roads, water for my thirsty soul. I need you. Oh, I need you. Sing your forgiveness. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. It's like the sound of the symphony to my ears. It's like
I believe in the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. I believe that the power of the gospel still makes the broken whole. I believe that the curse of sin was broken when they rolled away that stone. I believe, I believe, I believe as I bow before you, Lord, I will confidence I will see your goodness Lord in the land I'm living in and no matter where I go and no matter where I've been I will see your goodness Lord in the land I'm living in I believe that the walls will start falling when we fall down on our knees, I believe that the blind will go walking and the blind are gonna see. I believe that the gates of hell tremble. When we fall down on our knees, I believe, I believe, I believe. As I bow before you, Lord, I will rise in confidence. I will see your goodness, Lord. Look at what the Lord has done Sing it to the darkness That the light has come Sing it to the nations Look at what the Lord has done Sing it to the daughters Sing it to the sons To every generation
Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, um, I just want to encourage you this morning, just not, don't be stiff. Be free this morning to move to worship God. Be free this morning. Be free this morning. You know, I said in the first service that, you know, I'm from a different country. And, you know, there are these parables that they normally say, you know, just to kind of teach some wisdom. And one of the things that they say is that a tree that doesn't know how to dance will be taught by the wind. This next song says that we need a fresh wind. Did, did you get that? You get that? You get that? So I want you to just move this morning. I don't know if you feel like a tree this morning. Just move around. Shake a little bit. Shake yourself. Shake yourself a little bit. Don't be stiff. Don't be stiff. The Spirit of God is moving in this place. And I think He wants us to just be free and open. That when His wind will blow, that we will move along with Him. Move along with Him. If you're sitting down, I'd like to encourage some of us who are still sitting to stand. If you can't stand, I understand. But if you can, stand and join us. We're not too young or too old to worship God. So we want to invite the wind of God this morning to move, to blow in this place. We need a fresh wind of God. The Bible says, in the last days, I will pour my spirit out upon all flesh, sons and daughters alike. Hallelujah. Hearts that burn with holy fear, pure and 
you to fill us with your presence. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Come on, just give him a wave offering this morning. Give him a wave offering this morning. Just say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I welcome you. Come on, in your own words, say something to him. God, I praise you. God, I'm available to be used by you. Yes, Lord. God, I need your spirit. God, I empty myself of anything, God, and I pray that you fill me with your spirit. Yes, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Fill us with your spirit, God. Come in this place, God, and do whatever it is that you want to do, God. I don't want to get in the way. Hallelujah. There's opportunities you can come to the altar or make an altar right where you're at. The beautiful thing about this song is that we get to confess our sins to God in this moment. We get to confess that we need Him more and more. We need you, Lord.
every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you sing holy holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me and your love to those around me yeah to those around me sing jesus the name jesus the name above every other the only one that can say Jesus the only one who could ever say sing worthy worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you sing holy holy there is no one like you there is none beside you Chapman Cowboy Church. We're gonna have church today, y'all. We're gonna we're gonna be preached to. We're gonna be taught today. And everybody in here, if you don't get something out of it, it'll be your fault. What I'm saying is, we're gonna have church in here today. Open your ears, open your hearts, receive what God's got for you. Because I know there's somebody in here God's got something for. Because He got something for all of us, don't He? Amen. 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 So we're going to lift him up today. And we're going to receive what our pastor is going to teach us today. Amen. Amen. If we have any first-time visitors here, there's a 
welcome home card and a seat back in front of you. If you'll turn, fill that out and turn it into Welcome Center, we've got a bag of goodies for you. Make sure if you're a first-time visitor, you fill that out. Amen? Amen? If you're not a first-time visitor and you don't have a home church, please come back. Center of the Word. It'll change you. you won't, you'll leave different than you came, I promise. Tithes and offerings. You know, tithes and offerings is a, <clears throat> excuse me, is a big deal. Because it's a big deal because it's calls you to be obedient to our Father. The one that meets our needs, the one that supplies our needs, calls us to be obedient to Him. So that's why we do, that's why we pay tithe. That's why we make offerings to bless the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Psalms 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Amen? Y'all get what that's saying? Let's get what that's saying. And we'll just have joy about us and trust in the Lord. It pleases him, and he will prosper us. Amen? Heavenly Father, we just come to you with thanksgiving. We lift you up. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Father, just bless these tithes. Bless these offerings. Bless the giver. Father, bless our pastor today as he, as he receives his anointing and gives his message today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now I'm then an old friend of mine I've not seen for some time We'll stop by and ask me Where have you been? What's on your mind? They wonder why I'm not drinking Painting this old town red I tell them I'm serving Jesus now And the old man is dead The man you see before you They look a lot the same I may wear the same old clothes, still have the same old name. But you're looking on the outside, if you could see inside instead, you would see. no hope inside I was lost in darkness just searching for a light and then one night in a little church after hearing what the preacher said Gave my life to Jesus and the old man was dead. The man you see before you may look a lot the same. I may
How many of you are glad that the old man is dead? Amen. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Well, I want to welcome those of you who are visiting with us today. Thank you so very much for being our guest. We appreciate you being here. I just want you to know I have some hopes for you. I do. My first hope is I hope people have been kind. that you receive something from God's word today that you can and will apply to your life. Those are my hopes for you. So welcome. Well, you know, we say we're a happy church. We're happy because of what God has done in our lives, right? We're a family church. And we are a church that loves the Lord. So I want to encourage you, family, to get around and introduce yourself this morning real quick to somebody that you don't know. Come on. The man you see before you They look a lot the same I may wear the same old clothes Still have the same God is good and all the time. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Ladies, I, I have a, an announcement and you need to hear this. I want you to do something special. Thank you, guys. You're like, oh, oh, what's, what's he going to say? What's he going to say? <laughs> Send him to men's retreat with us in April. I'm telling you, it's, it's, we, we have it every year. It's, it's on Lake Livingston uh, at Trinity Pines Conference Center. Um, we do all of our own cooking. Yes. And love it truth, the reason we do all our own cooking is we couldn't afford to feed these guys any other way. <laughs> but like one night we'll have, we'll, they'll make a gumbo. Our, our web feed friends from Winnie will make a gumbo. Did y'all get that? <laughs> and then the next night we cook, we, we'll cook catfish. And uh, it's just a, it's, it's what we do, the, the agenda is real simple have service in the afternoons or in the evenings but the guys are free to do whatever they want to during the day and we found that to be uh, um, very impactful so if you want a brand new man send him to that retreat because I promise you he will come back he'll come back restored he'll come back renewed he'll come back with rejuvenated with energy all because of what the Lord will do in his life during these few days it's, it's almost like well, here's what it's like you know men we're just guys with gray hair or no hair some, some of us but 
there's a teenager trapped inside of here that don't want to be responsible all the time. And that's what happens when we go up there. And the Lord just moves in the lives of these men. It's just a powerful time. So I want to encourage you, you guys, come. Come with a sign up today before you leave. Don't let the enemy talk you out of not going. Don't, don't let him tell you you've got way too much going on. Because here's the truth. If you died today, one week later, they would have you replaced. Go get what you need from the Lord so that you can bring that back to your family, which God has ordained you to be the head of, to be the leader of. Amen? Amen. Well, would you give this worship team a hand this morning? I need some more light up here. There's a little boy who was going from door to door in his hometown, and he was selling postcards. He was selling these postcards for 50 cents apiece. And one of his customers, thank you so much, one of his customers said this. He said, son, what are you going to do with all of this money that you're making? And he said, oh, sir. I'm raising $100,000 for my church's new building. And his customer, this man in shock, said, Son? He said, Yes, sir. He said, Are you planning to raise all this money yourself? He said, Oh, no, sir, but we're going to get it done because there's two of us. Hello, do you get it? Teamwork makes the dream work. And no matter how insignificant you think you are or what God has called you to or what a big shot you think you might be, listen, it takes teamwork. It takes all of us working together to accomplish the will of the Father. That's what it takes. Teamwork makes the dream work. And I have a question that I want to start with today. What is your part What is your part in what God has called you and equipped you to do? What has God anointed you to do for Him? I'm getting partial light, disco light. I just need some light so I can read, y'all. But what has He called you to do? Well, I want to talk to you about something today, and it's just this. It's the anointing. The anointing. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, I'm going to read to you verse number 8, and then we're going to skip down to verse 18 and 19. It says this. It says, these are the names of David's mighty warriors. Josheb, Bashibeth, a Tichomite, was was chief of the three. He raised his spear against 800 men whom he killed in one encounter. That's a bad dude. Skip down to verse number 18. It says this. Abishai, the brother of Joab, son of Zariah, was chief of the three. He raised his spear against 300 men whom he killed. So he became as famous as the three. Was he not held in greater honor than the three? He became their commander, even though he was not included among them. You see, these were men that God had chosen to surround David. David, this was before David became king. And these guys were real life superheroes. I mean, come on, think about it. One guy that could take a spear and whip 800, kill them all, just 800 of them. Man, that's like Tasmanian devil quick. Some of y'all youngsters in here are thinking, what is the Tasmanian devil? Google it. (laughs) How many of y'all remember the Tasmanian devil? Come on. (laughs) Yes, Lord. I can tell you today that the Avengers had nothing on these three mighty men. And I want to talk to you today about the Abishai anointing. I know what some of you are thinking right now. What is Abishai? Simple. 
Abishai was just a normal man. But in his normalcy, he didn't accomplish what he accomplished without the anointing on his life. You see, he was anointed to be a mighty man of valor. Abishai anointing. People think, man, when you say Abishai anointing, what is that? Oh, that sounds good. That sounds deep, Pastor. No, Abishai was his name. I could talk to you about Bob's anointing. <laughs> but let's, let's get a clear idea of what the anointing is before I begin. The anointing is simply this. God's power on our lives to help us accomplish God's purpose and build God's kingdom. You notice how how much of that has to do with you or how much the anointing has to do with me. It's God's purpose or God's power on our lives to help us accomplish God's purpose and build his kingdom. How many of you would say that you would like to have the anointing of God on your life? Come on, I want to see your hands. You know, this is audience participation. Thank all of you for raising your hands because I believe that God is going to use you. When God called David to do a specific task, I want you to notice this. He put these, a team around him. Why did, he put, why did God put a team around David? To help him accomplish his task. And the Bible calls them mighty men. Why? Because no man is an island. Church, today I'm here to tell you that that. That you and I, we need the Abishai, that same anointing that he had on his life. We need the same, we need some Abishais around the leadership of this body of believers here. So that the next 15 years of this church will be greater than the first 15 years of this church. And I'm believing today that God is going to raise up some Abishais in this place. And for a purpose to fulfill God's plan and purpose in this region that he's called us to. You say, well, Pastor, I'm not called to this region. Yes, you are because you live here. You live in this region. God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you. And he wants to use you. He wants to use you in ways that you've never even dreamed of or thought of. You know, I still run into people that I... I grew up with, and they're just as surprised to see me when they, you know, when they find out that I'm a preacher. They're like, really? They're waiting for the punchline, and there is no punchline. You know, and, and so often we think that we're not qualified to do a specific task for the Lord. But can I tell you, I still don't feel qualified to do this job. But God has blessed my obedience. And guess what? God will bless your obedience. You know, because of the obedience of one man, one man saved a whole race, a whole human race. What do you mean? Remember when... This man walked up to the Red Sea, and he was standing at the Red Sea, and he had a stick in his hand, and the people behind him, and then, and then boogity, 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 coming way out there, stirring up all that dust, was an army to come kill them all. What if he hadn't obeyed God and put that staff out over the water? That whole race would have diminished. Think about how powerful obedience really is. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. And when we're obedient to God, no matter how silly the task may seem, look what, I mean, just think about this. When he said, put that staff out over that water, boy, and tell it to part. He probably went, sir, got another idea? No. What about when the river was out of its banks? Same thing. They walked across that river. None of them drowned. None of them perished. They went right across. Think about this. When he he struck this rock on top of a hill in a desert. Now, come on, y'all. Hey, 
Lord, we're thirsty down here. All right, well, go up here and touch this rock. And water's going to flow out of this rock on top. Not down at the bottom, on, go on top of the hill. Okay. Lord, we're hungry out here. Well, pray that I would send you everything that you need. Okay. And man, they ate fried quail every day. Huh? It's amazing at what obedience will accomplish. And we think, well, God wants to do that with everybody else. And no, he, he doesn't want to do it with everybody else. He wants to do it with you. He wants to do it in you and through you. Thank you all for all the amens. I'll just keep going. You see, I believe this, that our best days are ahead of us. And I want to challenge you to claim the anointing that God has for your life. But I want to challenge you to claim it today. God has big plans for this church, and you're part of it. Now, I appreciate what's going on around the world. You know, around, you, you hear of revival spreading. It's, it's, going, it's happening at different places. But I'm believing God that it's going to happen right here. You can ask the prayer team, and they know, they know this. But I have been praying for quite some time that God would begin to stir the church here. So that revival would fall here in this region that we live in. And listen, because that's going to happen, we've got to get ready. We've got to get ready as believers. We've got to get ready as a church, as, as people. Because revival is coming and we need your help to reach the lost. We need your help to pray for the sick. We need your help to, to love the unlovable. There's some unlovables in this world. And we need your help to reach those who nobody else wants. You're needed. And you need the anointing to accomplish your task. And today I want to share with you four characteristics of the Abishai anointing. Here's the first one. Number one, it was birthed in difficult times. This anointing was birthed in difficult times. Look right here where it says in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 and 2, it says this. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down to him there. All those who were in distress or debt or discontented gathered around him. This is how their church started. This was the first church of the broke, busted, and disgusted, surrounded around David. How many of you would like to be a member of that church? Oh, you broke? You come on in here. You disgusted? Come on in. We'll take you too. You don't like anybody? Oh, yeah, we'll put you on the front row. <laughs> this was their church. About 400 men were with him. This is how it finished up. Notice the Ab the, that the Abishai anointing was not birthed in perfect times or great conditions. And that's our problem. We think that we have to be in that perfect place or that perfect time or that perfect environment or be perfectly good ourselves to have this. And we don't. Now I want to tell you something today. You're not perfect. Now, you could have asked my grandma Ruby if I was perfect. She would have told you, by Lord, yes, that boy's perfect. <laughs> but I was not perfect. And I know you grandmas out there, you think that grandbaby, oh, perfect. No, they're not. They're rotten too. <laughs> There's no perfect person. There's no perfect environment. What, but what we do is we serve a perfect God. He's perfect in all ways. <laughs> this church that you're in right now has had some difficult times. See, I was a man of vision. When God told us to start the church here, we did. In the year we started the church, the stock market crashed. 
people were like, Gene, are you sure you want to do this? And I was like, absolutely. I know that I heard from the Lord. And so we started the church, and then that recession started, you know, and then just things went from bad to worse. But I wasn't focused on things going on around me. I was focused on being pleasing to the Father. And we started in the, at the most beautiful rodeo arena. It had a roof and no walls. It was the perfect environment. When it was hot outside, it was hot inside. When it was cold outside, it was cold inside. When it rained outside, it blowed up under the inside. Then we moved from there to the, to the uh, community building. We were there for quite some time, about four months. And then we were able to purchase a beautiful blue and white tent. And that foyer that y'all walk in right there, that's exactly where it's set. Right there. That people said, well, why do we have a ramp going down the restrooms? Well, it's because your pastor is too tight to spend money to get restrooms level with this slab. There was nothing wrong with them. We had those before we had the building. And we had a ramp from the tent because we had a deck, y'all, in the tent. We was upscale. <laughs> and from the deck to where we poured the slab, there was a ramp. So guess what we did? We just left it like it was, and we're still using it today. I promise you it's, be, it's better than the alternative that we did have for quite some time. We had them top of the line, fancy porta cans. And you know, it's interesting how somehow by the grace of God, we made it through. We made it through and the church began to grow. And, and you know, I, I can tell you about difficult times and imperfect situations. But it was during those imperfect times and imperfect situations that we would continue to see people come to know the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior, that we would continue to see people come that were broken, that were hurting. We continued to see people that were lost. We continued to see marriages reconciled. We continued to see multiple things in an imperfect situation. Why did we see those things? It was because of the anointing that God placed on this place. He blessed us. We had hurting people show up and God blessed them. We've had ministry leaders quit at terrible times. I remember one Sunday morning I was sitting in my office and I was just wrapping everything, whatever, what I was going to say, I was just kind of wrapping it up in my mind and thinking about different things. And I'm sitting in there and my door to that office, it flew open, wham! And this guy looked at me and he pointed his finger at me and he said, I quit. I said, okay. <laughs> and he didn't even shut the door when he left. <laughs> Still don't know what he's mad about. Still don't. But we've had challenges. We've had the ups. We've had the downs. We've had the tough times. But I'm, I want to tell you something. I believe that this church understands difficult times. And because we understand difficult times, we also know that God is always faithful in all times, every single time. Aren't you thankful today that God doesn't just bring you to the valley, but He'll bring you through the valleys of life? I want to remind you of something. Just on the other side of every mountaintop is a valley. Every valley. As a mountaintop. Every valley. And some of us, some of us, we've come up on the rough side of the mountain. And for some, this hits too close to home. You see, the devil has attacked you. The devil's attacked your home. The devil's attacked you at work. The devil's attacking your health. The devil's attacked your family. And yes, the devil's even attacking your finances. But we know this. That he who began a good work in us is faithful to carry it through. And some of you never thought that you would even be in a church, much less involved in the ministry of a church. Amen. I never thought I'd do this. But I'm thankful that I do. I'm thankful that I do. God is faithful. And some of you understand that 
that, that God will use a willing vessel. Some of you understand this already. You remember when God first began to deal with you about getting involved and you were like, okay, but if, oh, I don't know. But you took that step and you started. And you've seen how God has begun to use you. You are who I'm talking to right now. I need you to tell others who are thinking, yes, I don't know, but maybe so. Tell them the ground's solid if they'll just take the step. Tell them that the Lord will meet them there if they'll just step over and begin to be used of God. You see, I can stand up here and tell you all these things, and you think, oh, well, you got a special connection. You got the golden telephone hid behind that <laughs> curtain back there. No, I don't. I don't. It's just that we've got to be faithful and take that step. And allow God to use us. God uses the willing. I said God uses the willing. Are you willing to be used of God? Thank you for all those amens. Yes, preacher. I just thought you was going to stand up and throw your hats and scarves and everything. <laughs> he wants to use you. Let him. Here's number two. Abishai's are setting on ready. First Samuel 26 and 6 says this. David then asked Amalek the Hittite and Abishai, son of Zariah, Joab's brother, Will you go down to the camp with me, Saul? Or go down to the camp with me to Saul? I will go with you, says Abishai. I don't know how many of you have ever been uh, quail hunting with dogs. But those dogs are amazing. So the guy that I went with, man, he put them dogs out and, you know, I don't remember, it's like five or 6,000 acres we were on. And those dogs were like, pew, 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 just running. And he's driving the truck just to save us a few steps. We didn't feel like we needed to have all those steps that day. <laughs> and those dogs, man, they're moving. And, man, when they, when they seen one or smelled one, whatever they do, they just would stop, like stop right now and look like a statue. If I'd have stopped that quick, I'd have left skid marks 60 feet long. <laughs> they was running wide open and just, bam, stopped. But one thing I noticed about those dogs that was very interesting to me was that their eye was never off of the task and never off their master. It was incredible how they would do. And imagine if we could be like that, like those dogs just, oh, oh, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? And then he cuts us loose and we're like, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? How amazing would that be? But you're like, oh. oh, Lord, bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them, bless them. What if we were excited to get up and excited to do something for the Lord today? Lord, send somebody my way that I can tell about your goodness and your mercy. Lord, send somebody my way that I can pray with today. Or we're like, nope, had not had my coffee, don't have time. <laughs> hmm. I want to show you something about what I read to you when David asked him to go down to Saul's camp. Saul... Wanted to kill David. He wanted to kill David because he was jealous of David. Saul killed more people than David, but they sung songs about David, not Saul. David was just better looking and, and easier to sing about, I guess. But Saul has 3,000 soldiers with him, trained fighters. And they're searching for David. And they want to kill David. And David couldn't sleep one night. He's laid up in the, in the cabin called a cave back in them days. And he's laid up in his cabin and he, he just decides to get up and go for a walk. And he's just taking a walk and he's probably singing, This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Whatever he's singing, something. He's out there. When all of the sudden 
He happens up on Saul, y'all. And there's 3,000 men asleep around Saul. And he goes, hmm. So he goes back to where his camp is at. And they got all 400 of those men. But only two of them's awake. And he sees them and he walks over and he goes, hey guys. Hey, y'all want to go down to Saul's camp with me? There ain't but 3,000 of them. Yeah. And the first tough guy, he says, huh, sir? Huh? And then this is what's amazing. Amalek says nothing. But Abishai says, Pastor. Hey, hey, man, that's crazy. Yeah, let's go do that. I'm with you, baby. <laughs> Takes off. We need some more Abishai's in this world and in the, in the church that's ready to do something crazy, something bold, something even dangerous for the Lord. Abishai was sitting on ready like them bird dogs. Mm. I believe there's an Abishai anointing stirring in the church today. And some of you, you're sitting on ready. What, what are you ready for? You're ready to reach the lost. You're, you're ready to do more crazy things for the Lord. Why? Because God has anointed you to do so. Some of you have the anointing. You just don't know which direction to go. Come see me and I can help you. You're ready to go and do whatever it takes to see people find their way to Christ. I know that you are. So many people that we know, so many people that, that we pass by their homes coming to church are hurting. They're hungry. They're lost. They're confused. And, and my question to you is, do you care enough to stop by and tell them about what Jesus has done for you? I'm so glad that every Saturday morning there was a knock on our door, whether we wanted to hear it or not. But he kept knocking and he kept knocking and he kept knocking and he kept inviting and he kept telling us about the goodness of God and he kept saying, hey, is there anything I can pray with you about today? And because of Jim Powell's resilience, there's been generations of my family's lives have been changed. There's power and in invitation. You see, Jim could have been lazy, but he wasn't. He kept inviting. And not only me, there's countless of others that he every Saturday would go and knock on doors and invite people to church. Oh God, that we would get that concerned anymore about people dying and going to hell that are lost. Or maybe that we would get concerned about people who have genuine needs, who are hurting, who are lonely, who are confused and say, and take time out of our day to stop for just a moment and share with them what we have. Thank you for all those amens. I hear the concern today. Do we care? Do we care enough to get them to God's house? These people's souls are in the balance. And they could be lost for eternity. And it's up to us, church, to reach them. When's the last time you told somebody who don't know Jesus that, hey, there's hope in Jesus? Hey, there's forgiveness in Jesus. Hey, there's future. There's a future for you with Jesus. Hey, there's, there's, I just want you to know something. Jesus loves you. And be able to explain that. Oh, that the church would get hungry to see people saved. Oh, that the church would, would be hungry to see people set free from the bondage of sin. You know what the Bible says about bondage? That it's the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. You see why it's important that we have the anointing of God on our lives? Because we can pray for somebody and guess what? It breaks the yoke of bondage of sin. Here's number three. Abishai's have a teachable spirit. So if you know a know-it-all, just remind them of Abishai, but just do it far away. I'm just kidding. Don't you do that. 1 <laughs> Samuel 26, verse 7 and 8 says this. So David and Abishai went, went to the army by night. This is so cool. 
And there was Saul lying asleep inside the camp with a spear stuck in the ground near his head. Abner and the soldiers were lying around him. That was his top chief. Abishai said to David, Today God has delivered your enemy into your hands. Now let me pin him to the ground with one thrust. I will not miss. He says, I won't have to do it twice. Understand that they've they've come up on Saul. And Abishai is, is a trained warrior. He's a bad dude. And they sneak in there in the camp and they come up on Saul and there he is. And the Bible says that there's a spear stuck in the ground right beside him. It was his spear right beside him. And he's like, ooh, man, there he is. Hey, boss man, hey, listen, I can end this chase right now. If you will let me, I can end it right now. I won't have to hit him twice with it once. And he struck out. Let me do it. And here's David going into teacher mode right here. Listen to what he says to Abishai. It's 1 Samuel 26, verse 9 through 12 says, But David said to Abishai, Don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? As surely as the Lord lives, he said, the Lord himself will strike him, or his time will come and he will die, or he will go into battle and perish. But the Lord forbid that I should lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. Now get the spear. Listen, Abishai, I know you want to kill him, son, but I'm going to let you take a trophy. You get his spear and get his water jug. Maybe he'll thirst to death. Who knows? But he said, get it and let's go. So David took the spear and the water jug near Saul's head and they left. No one saw it or knew it. Nor did anyone wake up. They were all sleeping because the Lord had put them into a deep sleep. Nobody woke up. And God did this on purpose so that David could have a teaching moment to Abishai. Interesting. I just want to tell you that here the the leadership is committed to teaching the word of God. And here's the reason for this. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses number 16 and 17 says this. It says, all scripture, how much scripture? All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So, why, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Why do we have the word? It's to whip us in shape. It's to make us get right. Why? So that we can be useful. This is why the Word of God goes forth. It's to equip us. And sometimes it's, it, it's, it's funny. Sometimes the Word is funny. Sometimes the Word is quite interesting. And other times it hurts. You know, it's... But, but the, the word is all about direction and correction. It's not always fun, but it, it's always right. And it's my desire to be a teachable leader. And it's my desire to see more changed lives. And it's my desire to see the Lord use you to reach others. I just want to tell you something today. Y'all think my job is to go out and reach this community. It's not. Amen, preacher. It's my job to equip the saints to go and reach people in this community, in this region that God has called us to. Some of you got a little lead poison, and we're going to pray that out of you, though. Y'all will get it in a minute. And I'm going to close right here. I'm going to put the mules in the barn. Y'all ready? Nobody's ready? Thank you. Yes, Lord. Abishai's fight for a fatigued leader. 2 Samuel 21 verses 15 through 17 says this. Once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines and became exhausted. So 
I can't say this word, but he's from up there close to Davin. One of the descendants of Rapha, whose bronze spearhead weighed about 300 shekels and who was armed with a new sword, said he would kill David. This is another David and Goliath story, okay? But Abishai, son of Zeruiah, came to David's rescue. He struck the Philistine down and killed him. Then David's men swore to him, saying, Never again will you go out with us to battle. Why? So that the lamp of Israel will not be extinguished. Abishai saved David's life. And he saved his life because he was called, anointed, and equipped to be his lifesaver. And I find it amazing when they, when they told him, said, listen, we love you. We know, you're, we know you're a warrior as well. But you're never coming to battle with us again. Why can't I go to battle with y'all? Because we don't want to see the light of Israel extinguished. We can't lose our leader. And friends... I just want to be honest with you today. Sometimes your leadership gets tired. And we need people around us to help us, to step up, to, to save us. We all know what it is to be exhausted. We all know what it is to be tired. And I know the word says that he will bless us coming and he will bless us going. And I'm glad he does. But I'm also thankful that he'll bless us when we don't know which way we're going. We all get tired. We all get weary. And I'm thankful that the Lord renews. And I'm also thankful that the Lord has put Abishai's around the leadership in this place. And I want you to know that here today there's an anointing stirring in this place. You can have it. You just got to receive it. And I want you to know that we can lean on each other. When you're not strong, that's why we're a family here. We're part of the family of God. And we can lean on each other. And when we do, let's, let's believe that, that, that they will help us to carry things on. Church, I say this every week and I say it on purpose. Our best days are ahead of us. And we're here for each other. And let's put the devil on notice today that when he messes with one of us, he gets the whole family to mess with. <laughs> Got to know that. Got to know that when, when hard times come, and they will, and they do, that we've all got each other's back. We're moving forward. And you know, when the enemy tries to mess with one of us, he should be dealing with all of us because we're family. It's, it's been 15 years, and it's been good years, but the best is still yet to come. We used to sing a song in church. song said this it says I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me y'all remember that song man we be getting it why because we believed it and today I'm, I'm here to tell you this you need to go back to the enemy's camp and get what he's taken from you. But get it with interest because the word of God says that whatever the enemy takes from you, he's got to return sevenfold. Listen, we need to go back to the enemy's camp and get our loved ones out of there, our family out of there, our friends out of there, our health out of there. We need to go back and get it. Why? Because we can. We can. We need to take it back. Abishai's our best days are ahead of us. You've just got to step out and step up and step into what he's called you and equipped you and anointed you to do. Question. What is your part? If you don't know, 
We need to talk. Because every part of the body has a function. Revival's coming to our region. And we need to be ready when it does. Friends, we need your help to reach people. We need to be going out and getting them to come to God's house. We need your help to pray for people. We need your help to love people. We need your help to care for people. And God will bless us if we're willing to be a blessing to others. Years ago, probably 20 years ago, the Lord gave me this. And it's simply this. And I want you to hear me when I say this. Whatever you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Whatever you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. You've got to believe that. You've got to believe that because God is faithful. God will bless us if we're a blessing to others. My question to you today is this. Are you lonely today? Are you discouraged today? Are you depressed today? Are you lost today? Do you need a touch from Jesus today? Because friends, He can meet every need that you have. And I said earlier, we're a family church, right? So your family knows if you look crazy or not. you to stand to your feet right where you are. Come on. Say, I, have, I, I need God to touch me. Pastor, I'm lonely. I'm depressed. I'm discouraged. I'm this. I'm that. I'm whatever. If you need something from the Lord today, I want you to stand. Don't be bashful. I'm going to wait. Some of y'all being hard hitting. I'm going to wait. Come on. That's amazing. That's a genetic disease that I've had all my life. I'm waiting for just one more moment. If you need something from the Lord, I want you to stand. Now there's there's several of you that are not standing. I want to ask you to do something. Would you find somebody to go and pray with? this morning. We're a family church. Okay? What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And there are those of you that are standing. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to find somebody and let them pray for you and you pray for them. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And listen, I know it's difficult. I ain't telling what's wrong. Don't. Just let them pray. Let the Holy Spirit of God and that anointing work through them to pray with you and for you. Come on, move around. Come on, don't be hard-headed. Move, move, move. Find somebody. Find somebody and pray for them. Find them and pray for them. Come on, move around. Y'all begin to pray out loud. what we have need of. Lord, you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think. God, you know, you know all about us. And Lord, there are those here who need healing in their bodies today. And I speak healing in Jesus' name. I command their bodies to line up with the Word of God and be healed and be whole right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, there are those in this place that They're discouraged, they're depressed, and they're lonely. God, I pray that you would fill them today with joy unspeakable and full of your glory. I pray, God, that you meet every need that they have. Lord, stir up those gifts that are within them. Stir up those gifts that are within us. God, use us in a greater and more powerful way, Lord. Help us today. 
Help us today, I pray. Lord, move on our behalf. Touch us, O oh God. Encourage us, O oh God, I pray. Meet every single need in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Touch your people, O oh God. Touch them. Touch them, I pray. Touch them, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, meet every need, Lord. Every need, every need, every need, every need, every need. And Lord, may this day be a day that they can always go back to and, and remind the enemy of what they've taken or what he's taken from them. And they can say, enemy, devil, you're a liar. I remember this day when I got it all back and you're not getting it again. Touch them, I pray. Touch them, I pray. Touch them, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Meet every need. just a couple of announcements um, before we go. The first one, um, everybody say next Sunday. Next Sunday is Blood Drive Sunday, so we want to take your blood next Sunday. Um, please be sure and go by the info center and sign up uh, to donate blood next week. Um, we'll be doing it like from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. So, um, Also, as Pastor said, men's retreat is just around the corner. There's information at the Info Center. If you um, would like more information or to sign up, there's also a sign-up sheet. Our play days are also right around the corner, and you can pick up all that information back there. So let's pray. Father, we love you today. Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, we thank you, God, that you are faithful to minister to every need, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you are have equipped all of us, that you have an anointing on every single one of us to reach people for your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you would bless each and every person in this room. Lord, that you would help us this week to walk in the anointing that you placed on our lives. Help us to reach others for you. Bless your people today. Bless them coming and bless them going. In Jesus' name, 